says, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God, and Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God. Now, the word corrupt means basically it's tainted with, it's deprived, depraved, it's tainted with wickedness. Mm -hmm. So the earth is going to, was, back in the days of Noah, it was corrupt. And we know that because the wickedness of man, right? And what he said, the wickedness of man, and he was going to destroy the earth. And he says, and the earth was filled with violence. Violence, we know what violence is. It's unjust force. It's crimes of all kinds. Uh, we saw that even in the days of Lot, right? Remember when the, the two angels, Lot took them in his house? It wasn't just sexual sin. It was the fact that they were just coming and they were basically trying to do what? Beat down his door. Right. Uh, to get to these men, but we're going to see this. The, these these very things that God destroyed the world with a flood, and that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with a with uh, fire and brimstone. It's exactly the way it's going to be in the last days. And and he said, and God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And so that's what we know. We know that, as Luke says, and as it was in the days of Noah, guess what? As it was, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Right. They did eat and they drank. Now, what's the problem with eating and drinking? Well, the Bible says that surfeiting and drunkenness were going to be a sign to the last day. And the word surfeiting means overeating to, to the point where you make yourself sick. People will be obese. They will be sickly. They will eat. They will drink. They will, they will, they, they married wives. And we know what that word marry means now. Mm -hmm. They're given in marriage. We know what that means now. There will be sexual, sexual immorality. People will be um, gluttonous. He says, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. He said, that's the way it was in the days of Noah. Now, let me ask you, if it's going to be the same as it was, so shall it be. Is it like that now? Yes. It's exactly like that now. Now, look what he says then. He says, likewise, also, as it was. Now, look at that next highlighted part. Even thus shall it be, what? It be. As the days of Lot, they did eat. They drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. And some of these things aren't bad. Right. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And it says, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. So when, so when Christ comes back, the same conditions that we saw in the days of Noah, the same conditions that we saw in Sodom and Gomorrah, will have the same conditions in the world today. Right. And we already we already talked about the sexual immorality and the sexual sin. It is commonplace. If you go turn on your television right now and skip through the channels, you're going to see sex. I'll wager on it. You can go turn the TV on right now. And, well, matter of fact, I know because, um, well, maybe not. It's ten thirty, but I know that uh, I know all the soap operas are coming on <laughs> this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> And so I know that's all that is because that's what my mom and my sisters watched when I was growing up. Right. And that was in the the seventies, and that was and it was bad then. Right. So. So, we understand that in the last days it's going to be as it was in the days of Noah and as in the days of Lot. That's why God he got tired of it, and he destroyed both of them. So. What does Timothy, now understand when, when Paul's writing this book, writing this letter to Timothy, it is the last thing that he writes before he's killed. And look what he says. He says, this no, talking to Timothy, that in the last days, perilous times shall come for men shall be. And then he's going to give you a whole list of things. And, and we could probably do a Bible study on each one of these things. But let's look at some of them. He says, men are going to be lovers of their own selves. Is that is that a common trait nowadays? Is covetous a common trait? Is boasters and proud and blasphemers and disobedient to parents and unthankful and unholy and 
without natural affection and truce breakers and false securers and continent fearers, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers. Of, are those things that we see in our society? Oh, yeah. They, though, every one of those we see in our si society. So guess what? This no, that in the what? Last days. So guess what we're living in? Last days. Last days. We're at the end. The problem is people can't see it. You know, or they'll say, I can see it, but since I'm a Christian, I got nothing to what? Worry about. Yeah. That's all I got nothing to worry about. So, that, yeah, this is not talking about believers. Believers are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Well, but today I just want to talk about one aspect of this, which I believe leads to almost all of these things. And that is the one you see highlighted. Disobedient to parents. Now, the, in the Ten Commandments, one of the Ten Commandments and listen, we don't always have, every child doesn't have a, 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 just this great parent, do they? But God still says, honor thy father and thy mother. That is one of the Ten Commandments, <coughs> honor, Excuse me. which is the opposite of what Proverbs says. Whoso what? Curse. You either honor or you curse. Right. And, he, and he says, whosoever curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be what? Put, put out. out. Not, and not just put out, but in obscure darkness. Have you ever been in a, in a place where it's so dark that you cannot see anything? It, it's almost like you're blind. You could put your hand right in front of your eyes right. and you can't see them. Right. That's what he says. If you... You're supposed to honor your father and mother, but if you curse your father, you curse your mother, that lamp that is inside of you will be put out. Now, let me show you what lamp means, because sometimes people think, oh, a lamp, they think of, the, you know, you just turn the switch on, the light lamp comes. That's not what a lamp is, because they did not have electricity the way we have electricity in our days, right? right. A lamp, now, now look what I kept in here, what the Latin and the Greek meaning, where the word came from means to what? Shine. To shine. That's where the word comes from. So it, a lamp is a vessel for containing oil to be burned by means of a wick. That sounds like a, it's a lamp or a candle or a light, a burning wick inserted in a vessel of oil, hence figuratively, a light of any kind is a lamp. The right. moon is called the lamp of heaven. Yes. And so when, when he says, you curse your father or your mother, that your lamp will be put out, he could put it this way. For there shall be no reward to the evil man, the what? Candle, right? Uh -huh. Or the lamp of the wicked shall be what? Put out. Yeah. So, so when he's saying that the lamp shall be put out, that's all he's saying is that light of any kind, the candle, shall be put out. And I know you guys understand this, but we want to review just a little bit. Remember, man is consists of body, spirit, and soul. Yes. And we know that the body, right? We know what the body is. And we know that when the soul, the spirit enters into man, right? The yes. spirit is the breath of God. When that spirit enters into man, right. what is conceived in him? A living soul, right? Right. And so... So that spirit that is inside of you is, the Bible has a name for it. What it says, the spirit of man is what? The candle. The candle. Okay. So now we know, and I want to make this clear, because the Bible says that the body without the spirit is what? Dead. And the spirit is the what? Candle. candle. So the body without the candle is what? Dead. So understand this. Uh, every person that is born into this world has a candle. Mm -hmm. Okay? The unbeliever has a candle because the candle is the spirit. And if he, didn't ha if he doesn't have a candle, he doesn't have a spirit. And the body without the spirit is what? Dead. Mm -hmm. So every human being, believer, unbeliever, 
every all of us are born into this world with a candle. Right. But that doesn't mean that our candle is what? Lit. Right. If you have a candle in a dark room where you cannot see your hand in front of your face, does that what does what good is that candle? No, uh, you can't. I mean, the, the candle, the function of the candle is you light it and it gives light. Right. And so within every single human being is a candle when they are born. It's their spirit. <coughs> and see, look what he says. He says, the candle of the wicked shall be what? Put out. Now, here's the question. Can he be talking to an unbeliever? No. Because an unbeliever, for his candle to be put out, it would have to be what? It had to be lit. <laughs> have to be lit. You come into the world without a lit candle. Right. You have a candle, but it doesn't mean it's lit. Right. And so, therefore, when he says, "Whoso curseth his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out," or when he says that the candle of the wicked shall be put out, can he be talking to an unbeliever? No. Or else, that unbeliever. It means that unbeliever had light. Right. So, where do you get the light? For thou will what? Light, light my what? Candle. 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 The Lord thy God will enlighten my darkness. So he just told you something. He says that within you is a what? Your spirit is a candle. Within you, the inner man, there's a candle. Right. And guess what? Right now, for every unbeliever in the world, it is what? Darkness. Oh. There's darkness. But now listen, and, and we've already shown that the believer can have his candle. If he's wicked, he can have his candle put out. So the unbeliever or the wicked believer is walking in what? He's walking in darkness, Right. And so how do you light the candle, right? The Lord is going to do it. He's going to enlighten that darkness, right? Because that's what's inside of you right now. Right. So how is he going to <laughs> enlighten the darkness? With his word. What does it say? The entrance of thy words giveth light. light. So the word of God gives light. What does it mean by giving light? It opens your understanding. It giveth what? Light. Give it it giveth light. It giveth understanding. <laughs> so when God's word, when you read God's word, when you hear God's word, something enters into you because you're darkness. Right. And guess what? It the the words give light, so the light enters in, and guess what it will do to your candle? It lights it, gives you light. It, it will light your candle. What does he say? For thou will what? Light my candle. How? Through the entrance of word. his words. That's how he lights your candle. So when when those words come into you and light your candle. Right, they get the entrance of those words give a flight, it gives what showing you that light is equal to what understanding. understanding. So, when you read his word, it gives you what understanding, understanding right? That's one of the reasons that um, our neighbor Dean said, um, when he, that's one of the things that opened his eyes into the Masons, he was a Mason. He said they somebody led him to a door and knocked and they said, who's there? And they said, it's our brother Dean. And they said, and he's in darkness seeking light. And when Dean later, when, when I, we exposed that to him about the, being evil, he said, uh, he said, I wasn't in darkness. A Christian is not in darkness. So he, that, that's one of the things that opened his eyes to his understanding that that yeah. was an evil organization. Yeah. Well, they're 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 an they're an organization that believes in hiding things. Oh yes, Absolutely. a secret society. God says that preach it on the housetop, right? Right. Nothing he said you don't take your light and stick it under a bed. You're not trying to hide anything. Exactly. 
But they do and so. Sometimes. So yeah, yeah. So any any organization, any religion that's trying to hide knowledge and hide understanding is evil. That's so, right. so look at the definition of understanding, because when you read God's word, it gives you light or understanding. The faculty of the human mind by which it apprehends. Now look at the look at these words. The real state of things presented to it or by which it receives or comprehends the ideas which others express. So in God's word, whose ideas are in the word, of, whose mind is in the word of God? It's God. Yes. And so for you to understand the mind of God or understand what God expects for you or uh, expects from you or understand what is right or what is wrong, what is good, what is evil, right? Yes. You have to read his word. Yes. And that will give you lighter understanding. But now understand, look what it also says. It says the real state of what? Things. Now that, that, that implies something. That implies that you can read God's word and not understand. Right. It means that you can sit up and you can listen to a, Bible, a sermon from a preacher and guess what? Get nothing. And get nothing. Now... We'll talk about that in a minute, but there's a reason why churches, what we modern people call churches, right. it's a reason. And there's a reason why they're part of the problem. There's right. a reason that we that Christianity has been degraded to the point where it is right now. Mm -hmm. It's because there is no flowing of the spirit. Right. Now. So let's look, he says, in the beginning, God created the heaven, and the earth. Now, remember, the earth is a picture of fallen man because the earth is what? It's without form. It's void. And darkness is what? Listen, God didn't create it that way. God created it perfect. Uh -huh. After a fall, after the fall of Satan, he destroyed. He got mad. He destroyed, right? And so we have an earth, which is no form to it, no life on it. Darkness is upon it. Listen, if you have a, an earth, that there is darkness upon it. Guess can anything grow? No. You okay? So so if you can have no vegetation and no life, right? We're just talking about veg vegetation right now. If you have if because nothing can grow in darkness, right? It's got to have light. So if you if everything's in darkness, if you have no vegetation, can you have any type of physical human or animal life? No. None, none of that. So what's the first thing that has to happen to have life? You have to read the word. Well, okay. I'm talking about from the earth's point of view, it's dark. Oh, it's got to have There's, sun. What, what is the first thing that has to happen before you can have life on this earth? You have to have sun. You have to have light, right? Right. And is that not what God does? He says, and darkness is upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moves. Mm -hmm. And upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be what? Light. 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 Now, can, can plant life grow? Yes. Okay, so plant life can grow. So if plants, if you have food, now humans, animals can now what? Right. So for you to have life, you must first have light. Right. And so that's what most believers do not understand. When they believe upon Jesus and God sends into you and lights your candle, you now have what? Light. Mm -hmm. Now you can have what? Life. Right. And you can have it more abundantly. But understand something. That the candle of the wicked shall be put out. If you believe that all you need is light to have life, you're wrong. There's other things that are required in the, because that was just day one, right? There, in other words, you, you can't, there's no rest. God did not, when he, when he, when he saved you, when you believed upon Christ as your savior, your status changed. You went from an unbeliever to a believer, but you don't, that don't mean you got the inheritance. 
That don't mean that your heart has been changed. It don't mean your mind's been changed. It don't mean it mean that you're 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 not still corrupt. God died for you that you might become the sons of God. In other words, he wants to make you like him, that we might be partakers of his holiness, that we might be partakers, partakers of his divine nature. And until you believe upon Jesus, until you get light, there can be no what? Life. Right. Because there is darkness. Darkness, as an unbeliever, when there is darkness, there can be no life. Even if you are a believer and your light is put out, until there is, until that candle is relit, guess what? There can be no what? Life. You have to, that's why he said, repent. Turn from your sins, right? Confess them. And, and, that, and that's, what, that's what our message is, is to the believer, is that if you believe that all you require to have life is light, then you're deceiving yourself. God, God didn't just die to make you his son. He may he died to make you perfect, to make you like him. Mm -hmm. Now, so we see that light is equal to understanding. Whoops. Yeah. <coughs> Look at Daniel. He says, uh, they're talking about Daniel, and he says, There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. Now we know that. Uh, that's that's the that's the pagans saying that, but they understood something about Daniel. There was something different about his candle, his spirit, right? Uh -huh. And in the days of thy father, talking to Nebuchadnezzar, our son, look what it says about Daniel: light and understanding, which we know are the same, and wisdom, like the wisdom of thy, of the gods, was found in him, whom the whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, the, thy father, the king, I say, thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers, for as much as an excellent, what? Spirit mm -hmm. and knowledge and understanding. Understand, he connects wisdom to your spirit. Mm -hmm. And just like he connects light to understanding, right, and knowledge. Daniel had an excellent spirit, and we want, to, we want to understand what it means by having an excellent spirit. Well, understand something. Light and understanding is not wisdom. Look what wisdom is. Because when you, the entrance of thy words gives you light, right? When you read God's word, you know this is right, this is wrong, this is holy, this is this is this is this is uh, this is evil, and and this is righteous. That's what God's word does. It shows you what God is like. It shows you what God expects. It shows you what is right and what is wrong. Right, but wisdom is something different. It is the right what use or exercise of what knowledge. So when you get the knowledge, when you understand that light and that understanding goes inside of you, now wisdom is the actual what? Taking that knowledge and taking that, that understanding and doing what? Using it. Exercising it. Mm -hmm. And that's what, that, see, da Daniel didn't just have light and understanding from God. He was what? Full of wisdom. <laughs> which meant he had an excellent what? Spirit. The candle, guess what Daniel did? He always kept it lit. Yes. He would confess. He would go three times a day, right? He'd open his window and he'd pray toward Jerusalem. He'd ask not just for the forgiveness of his sins, but of his people's sins. And so... Um, so anyway, uh, then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake, said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? I have even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and the light, and that light, and understanding, and look what it says, to show you that the wisdom and the spirit are talking, he's talking about the same thing. 
the excellent wisdom is what? Found in thee, or an excellent what? So, so just because you, your candle is lit, and just because you have understanding of knowledge, right? For you to have an excellent spirit, an excellent candle that never goes out, you must what? Have the right use or exercise of what? Knowledge. So you can know this is right and this is wrong by the entrance of thy words. When that light comes into you, you can say, okay, the Bible, God teaches me that this is right and this is wrong. So what would be the right use of that? To do what is right and not do, and not do what is wrong. Right. When God says, if you see somebody and they're hungry and you don't feed them, you know you're supposed to, but you don't. Guess what? Is that the right use or exercise of knowledge? No. When you know that the Spirit is pressing upon you <coughs> to share the gospel of the kingdom with someone, you know that, that God is pressing upon you and you don't do it. Is that the right use or exercise of knowledge? No. So when you have gifts and you don't use them, is that wisdom? No. Even though you know you should, and even though you that light is entered into you, and the, the entrance of thy words is what gives you that light, right. that doesn't mean you have wisdom. Right. You can know that you're going to miss the kingdom if you do certain things, and you can know that you'll get into the kingdom if you do certain things. But if you don't do those things and you miss the kingdom, even though you were given light, guess what? Is that wisdom? No. He says, folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom. But a man of understanding, look what he says, does what? Think about it. The right use or exercise of, of, of knowledge. When you understand knowledge, a man of understanding walks in the knowledge that is wisdom mm -hmm. but if you don't you're destitute of wisdom but if you walk in that light guess what that's that's what he says here in hosea he says who is wise and he shall understand these things prudent and he shall know them for the ways of the lord are right and the just now let me show you something real quick we'll come back to this the just Um, Noah was a what? Just man. He was a just man and perfect. Do you want to be a just man and perfect? Yes. Well, the ways of the Lord are right. And the just doesn't just know them because they've been reading the word and the light's coming in. The just shall what? Walk, Walk in them. But the transgressors, transgressors shall fall therein. And trust me, you can know and understand truth. You can read the words, the entrance of that words give it light, it give it understanding. And if you don't walk in those things, the, the candle of the wicked shall be what? Yeah. Or the transgressors shall fall. You can walk in, you can know those things all you want to, but you have to exercise. You have to exercise knowledge. You have to use knowledge. You can't just have understanding and knowledge and not use it. Yes. He goes on, he says, uh, Psalm says, um, they know not. Neither will they understand. So listen, if you don't read, let's say we're just going to apply this to a believer. If you do not read the word of God, you will not know what God's will is. You will not understand what God's will is. You will not, the entrance of thy words give up light. So if you don't read God's word, it's light entering in. So understanding is not, that's what it says. They know not, neither will they what? Understand. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they walk on in what? Darkness. In darkness. If you walk in darkness, you know what's going to happen? If you, if you, if the, if the, if there's no moon tonight, 
<coughs> and you try to walk through the woods out by, behind y'all's house, you know what's going to eventually happen to you? Run into a tree. You're going to run into a tree. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall. Right? Mm. Because it, it, it don't matter how well you know that property, because that's a big, you have a lot of land out there. You don't know every step, do you? No. Not in the dark. No. He says, the Lord, by wisdom, hath founded the earth. By understanding, hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up, and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, let not them. Who is them? Wisdom, understanding, and what? Knowledge. Knowledge. <laughs> Let not them depart from thine eyes. Well, listen, where does where does understanding come from? The word. The entrance of thy words giveth light, it giveth understanding. Where's that? So if you say, let not knowledge and wisdom and understanding depart from your eyes, that, that means you must be constantly having your God's word before your what? Eyes. He says, keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be, who is they? Sound wisdom and discretion. Look what it says. They shall be, so shall they be life unto your what? See, you don't need just light. The world didn't just need light, but God understands something. You can't have life without light. You start with light. But now you have to, now, now that there's light, there can be life. Can there not? Can there be animal life? There can be plant life. There can be human life, right? On the world. But now that you as an unbeliever believed upon Jesus, now that you've got light, guess what? The entrance of thy words give us understanding. Guess what? They, those things, they will be life unto your soul. Now that you got light, these things wisdom and knowledge that's the life listen when when you when you are um when you have a child when you your child first comes into the world you have weeks to feed them right no <laughs> no oh, okay you just feed them every other day <clears throat> no how do you listen they come into the world they have light now how do they have life? How do they continually have life? In the food. You have to feed them how often? <laughs> Two, yeah. Two, four hours. <laughs> Every day, multiple times a day. That's where life comes from, is from the food. Right. The food is broken down. It's nutrition. It goes into the bloodstream. It makes them grow. So we, apply, we can apply that to spiritual things. That good food makes them grow. And, these and God's telling you right here that wisdom and knowledge and understanding which you get from his word is life unto your what? So, and if you don't eat every day, guess what will happen to your soul? It will die. It will die. And that's not talking physical. That it's a spiritual death that you as a believer will experience. If you, if you don't read his word every day, your candle's going to be put out, and I'm going to show you that. He says, that so shall they, wisdom, discretion, knowledge, understanding, be life unto your soul. It's your spiritual food, and grace be to thy neck. Then, after you've got these things, that shalt thou what? Walk, Walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not what? Stumble. Stumble. You've got to walk in the light, not just that you have light. Now there's a path you actually have to go down. It's not a matter of just let there be light and then God rested. There's a path after light, there is life. It is a continual regeneration. When you feed that child every day, guess what they'll do? Right. They'll grow, they'll get bigger, they'll get stronger, they'll grow into an adult. It's the same with your spiritual walk. If you will eat of the word of God, what did, what did Christ say? If you will 
eat of my flesh and drink of my life, my, my blood, right? You will have life. But if you don't, there's no life in you. He didn't say if you believed upon me. He said if you'll eat of my word, my flesh, if you'll drink of my blood, my spirit, because my spirit is contained in my word, you'll, you'll have life. Yes. And, that, and that's what believers don't want. To, you know why they don't want to understand it? Because they don't want to understand it. Right. That's the age that we live in. Mm. Look, look what he says. He says, um, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. That's the way we want to go. Wisdom is what? Remember? The right use or exercise of knowledge. Right. I have been taught in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her. You know why? She is what? Thy life. They are life into your soul. Just as if you don't feed that baby, that baby will die. You don't feed your soul, your soul will what? Die. die. For a thousand years. Believers say, I don't believe that. It doesn't matter whether you believe it or don't believe it. God is going to do exactly what he says in his word. Amen. And the problem, the problem nowadays is believers do not want to hear the truth. There's going to be wailing and gnashing of teeth at the judgment seat. <clears throat> but Lord, Lord, didn't we do this and didn't get depart from me? I never knew you. But that can be the same, those same words we can hear, me and you, all three of us. If we do not take that light and walk in it, right. it's one thing to know that you're supposed to give out the gospel of the kingdom or to give out food or give a Bible to somebody or share with somebody or do this or do that. Whatever light God's given you, if you don't use that light, if you take it and stick it on that candle under a bed, guess what? What profit is it? What yeah. profit is it? No. Now, she is our life. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. Pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. That's what these... That's what these believers who are teaching these lies... And that's exactly... Listen... I don't think that I'm being wrong by being bold and saying they're lies. When you teach a believer, he's got nothing to worry about. Right. You're, you're causing him to do something. They cause him to what? Some to what? Dumbled. Oh, I don't have nothing to worry about. Where'd you learn that? If you talk to a believer and he says, oh, I'm a believer. I don't got nothing to worry about. Where do you think he learned that from? Maybe. The word of God, right? No. no. He learned it from another man. And that man that taught him that, he, he learned it from the Word of God, right? No, he learned it from another man. The Bible says that in the last days, there are going to be men that are going to creep in unaware, and they're going to turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. Yes. He says, they eat the bread of wickedness. That's why God destroyed the, the world in the days of Noah. That's why he destroyed his Sodom and Gomorrah. And just as the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and Noah, so shall it be in the day when the Son of Man shall appear. It's going to be a wicked world, sexual sin. The one we're talking about today, disobedient to parents. And drink the wine of violence. He says, but the path of the just is as a sh the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. Yes. Why is it dark? Because the entrance of thy words give up what? Right. So what are they not doing? <laughs> not reading the word. They're not reading the word. 
that shineth more and more into the perfect. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. There's a reason they stumble. They're walking in darkness, which means they're not reading God's word. And if they are reading God's word, right? Can you read God's word and it not affect you? No. He says, my son, attend to my words. Don't, don't just read my words. Attend to them. Don't just let light and knowledge and understanding come into you. Walk in wisdom. Look what he says. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let not them not depart from thine eyes. Isn't that the exact thing he said up here? Look what he said. My son, let not them what? From thine eyes. Keep the word of God forever, forever before your eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. We talked about this last week. How do you change your heart? Thy word have I what? He's in your heart. Attend to my words. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Hide them in your heart that you might not sin against him. Those words have spirit and power to change our hearts and our minds to make us like Christ. We want to be what? Partakers of his divine, uh, his divine nature, right? That Paul said, thy travail and birth until you be what? Formed into Christ. And that's what we want to do. You cannot do it without God's word. Listen, it's impossible to change your heart and your mind and to purify your soul, listen, impossible without God's word. Amen. Because in God's word is contained God's spirit. And that's how you change. It's through his spirit and through his word. Amen. He's, he says, unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. So there's, there's, there's the obedient believer. But unto them which be what? Disobedient. Disobedient. So there's the believe, say in a great house, there's two types of Christians. Those which believe, not believe on him as their savior, believe on his word. Right. Because look what he says. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone, who's the stone? Jesus. Okay. And Jesus is in the beginning was the what? The word. The word. So the stone is the word. Mm -hmm. And they which be disobedient, the word which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone, the word of what? Stumbling. Stumbling. See, Christ is the word. And if you believe, he's precious. But if you're disobedient, you're going to stumble. And look what he says. He's a rock of offense. <laughs> Even to them which what stumble. stumble at his word. So you can you can you can read the word of God. You can sit there. Listen, every single day you, you can go to church seven days a week. Right. But if all you're doing is sitting there and listening and believing what a man's telling you, that's like eating food without chewing it. Right. Your body, you, your, your stomach's not made to, you can't take a piece of uh, sirloin tip and swallow it like a pill and expect your, your stomach to do what? To right. digest it. You've got to chew on the word. You have to chew on your food. He says, whereunto also they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his what? Marvelous light. light. He's called you. Listen, the entrance of thy words give a flight. You have to walk in that light now. You know what is right. You know what is wrong. You know what he expects. If you don't read the word, he will guess what he'll do. He'll tell you. He'll show you. Right. So, I'm going to show you that because we talked about this. We talked about this up here. He says, the lamp, if you curse your father or your mother, your lamp's going to be put out. 
the candle of the wicked. We already showed that's a believer. That's not an unbeliever. Unbeliever don't have his light, his candle lit. He's right. got a candle, but it ain't lit. Right. So I want to show you something. And we'll we'll start to close. Um, find it where I was. Okay. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Look what he says, Destroy this temple. Do you know that when they came out of Egypt, God, God had them build a what? In the wilderness. A temple. Solomon had what, what built? A temple, right? Right. But when Jesus is talking here, Destroy this temple and I'll raise up in three days. What was he talking about? Body. Yeah, look what he says. This, this said the Jews, 40 and six years was the temple in building. They, he wasn't talking about that temple, was he? No. And what thou reared up in three days? But he, talking about Jesus, spake of the what? The yeah. temple of his body. See, what? Know you not that your body is the what? Temple. temple. Of the, it's the temple. Okay. So within that temple, we already talked about this. The body without the spirit or the body without the candle is what? Dead. Dead. If, if the body, if you, because you, if, let's say you're living right now, you have a body and you have a candle, right? right? Your body is the temple and the spirit is the candle. Right. So right now, Patricia, Carlos, and me, we have a temple. And inside of us, we have a candle. Right. Now, I want to show you something. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure olive oil beaten for what? Right. For light. They're going to go into the temple to cause the lamps or the, the candles to what? Burn continually. How, how much? Continue. Continually, right? They, in other words, it's their job to go into that temple every single day to bring oil for the candles, right? For the lamps, that the light never goes what? Goes out. Never goes out. It continually burns. He says, without the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation, shall Aaron order it from the evening until the morning before the Lord. How often? And it shall be a statue forever in your generations. He shall order the lamps upon the pure candlesticks before the Lord continually. That is a picture, that temple, that temple where that candle is, is a picture of your body, right? Whoops. Is a picture of your body. The temple is a picture of your body. And your spirit is a picture of the what? The candle. Yes. So I have a, my body is a temple and my spirit is a candle. And when God lighted it, when he lit it for the first time, he never meant for it to do what? To yeah. ever what? To yeah. ever. But what did he say? He's going to put the candle of the wicked out. Right. So you need to turn from your wicked ways. You need to continue to bring oil into the temple. How often? Every day, right? Yes. Isn't that what Aaron did? Right. From the, so shall Aaron order it from the evening until the what? Morning. Continually. If you don't bring oil in every day, you your candle being put out. You don't add, you don't believe me? Go check out the parable of the ten virgins. Right. You need to always keep your candle lit. And you need to walk in the light of that candle. Not just now that you have understanding. You need to walk in it. What does it mean to walk in understanding? Because the light is understanding, right? Right. And he says, the entrance of thy, thy words give a understanding. It gives light. But God says this right here, and he's going to tell you exactly what this means. Walk in water. Okay. 
So now you have understanding. He wants you to walk in understanding, wis- uh, walk in wisdom. Wisdom is what? Remember, it is the what? The exercise or what? The right use or exercise of what? So when you walk in wisdom, you're walking, you're, you've got the understanding, you know what is right, you know what is wrong, you know what the Lord expects from you, right? Yeah. Now he wants you to actually take that and use it, exercise it. So how do you exercise, how do you use that that knowledge when you walk in wisdom? Well, he'll tell you, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. And here's walking in wisdom. Doing what? Redeeming the time. You want to get into the kingdom? You yes. already understand. You read. If I pray, I'll read your Bible every day. I pray that you learn, that you, you understand right and wrong, and that God is continually giving you understanding. But you have to walk in that knowledge in that and, and walk in wisdom. Wisdom is using that knowledge. Yes. The knowledge is that if you do what you're supposed to do, you get in the kingdom. Yes. But if you don't walk in wisdom, you're in danger of your candle being what? Put out. Yes. You're to redeem the time. You get so much time from the day that you were born again that God said, let there be light. And he made you a believer. And to the day that, guess what? The body without the spirit is dead. And when that candle was taken from you, you have no more time. Right. You say, how does this apply to this right here? Because this is what we eventually, remember, Corruption starts with lack of training. And one of the signs of the last days, we talked about sexual sin, but one of the last, the ones we want to talk about today was, this would be one of the signs of the last days. Children are disobedient to what? Parents. Everybody. They're disobedient to parents. And listen, almost all these other ones Lovers of their own self, covetous boasters, proud blasphemers, unthankful. All the other ones can be directly connected to that one right there. Yeah, that um, Corinthians six nineteen. That's the one I that the Lord used for me for when I quit smoking. <laughs> yeah, my body was a temple. And he bought it with a price. It is a temple, and I think we we forget that sometimes. That <laughs> God said, remember what he says about the body, soul, and spirit, that we're to sanctify holy body, soul, and spirit. Right. And and he wants us to have a holy body, a holy spirit, a holy soul. So so the problem is, in the last days, they're going to be disobedient for parents. And I think, why are we, why did the world, why did the world, get corrupted so much that God had to destroy it with a flood. Why did Sodom and Gomorrah get so corrupted that God had to destroy it with fire and brimstone? So, and I believe it. it's because that, because just like it was, right, so shall it be when the, when the Son of Man shall appear. It's going to be just like that. Is I believe this is the problem right here. Train up a what? How? Train means to train or train up, to educate, to teach, to form by instruction or practice, Mm -hmm. to bring up. Remember what wisdom is, the practice or use of knowledge. If, if, If you will not just teach your child, but you will train. Listen, a child, a child, if you sit them in front of a TV for four hours, guess what they'll do? Do what the TV shows when you do. And, 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 and that and you let them, that's the exact, if you set them in front of a TV for four hours, they'll watch a TV for four hours. That's right. They're going, a child is going to do exactly what he's taught for the most part. And yeah. he might not like it sometimes, but if yeah, you, if you train they're... him up and you make him do it, guess what? A child, yeah. you know, it says, um, he says, um, he says that a, 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 the the heir is what as long as long as he's a child different nothing from a servant but he's under governors and tutors until the time appointed the father 
you have to be you have to train up your children. One of the reasons you see why 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 did the, the nation of Israel become corrupt? Because they they were doing things and then their children would see it and guess what their children would do? They see what they saw, not what they told them to do. Yeah. You can and now listen, you can tell a child, oh, you shouldn't smoke. Have you yeah. ever seen a family listen, you ever seen a family where you say, Oh, you know, the parents drink or the parents smoke or the parents do some other sin. I don't want to I'm not picking on smokers and drinkers, but some other sin. You don't do this, but the parent does it. Guess what the child ends up growing up doing? Most of the time they will, but my two girls say they would never smoke because we smoked. <laughs> and and that's and that's good. And I'm glad. But that is not always that is not I would say that is that is that is a minority. <clears throat> you can't tell a child don't do this. You know what? When you tell a child, um, you know, uh, we're watching me and your me and your me and your daddy, and we're watching a, a a movie that you can't watch. You're not old enough. Right. W well, that means when they're old enough, guess what they're going to do? They can watch it. It's all right. Right. You can't listen to that type of music. You can't do this. You can't do that. But if you're doing it, guess what? You're training up the child, but not right. in the way he should go, the way he should not go. Right. And so I think that's where the problem where we have, why are they disobedient to parents? Well, if, if, you say, if you're telling a child they shouldn't do this, but you're doing it, guess what? Mm -hmm. That's the way they're going to that. Look what he says. Speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, and charity, and patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior. Look what it says. Not in just word, but in what? Behavior as become a holiness. Not false accusers, not given to much wine. What are they supposed to be? Teachers. What is to train up a child? To what? To teach. To teach. Teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands. Do we have parents that are teaching children, little girls and little boys to love their husbands and love their wives? No. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be this way encourage them teach them <coughs> in all things showing you thyself listen because because listen your behavior is what not your words but your behavior is what they look at mm -hmm. in all things showing thyself that's what they're going to see not what you say but what they see Showing yourself a pattern of good works in doctrine, showing what? Uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. Children are not. Why did why did the world get to the way that it was? Because remember, right before the flood, remember what it said about Noah? Right? The world had become corrupt, right? Right. It says that the sons of God, right? The seed, God's seed, had went into women. They were marrying. They were giving them. They were doing whatever. They were taking wives as many as they wanted. Right. They were sleeping with a lot of different people, just as the days of Noah. So shall it be. And get and and so you can sit there and tell your child you shouldn't do that. But if they see it, guess what they're going to do? They're not going to. They're not going to do what you tell them. They're going to do what you show them. Exactly. Practice. And that's the world we live in. That's why the world got to the point where God destroyed it with a flood. He says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. Look what he says. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to what? Teach us. Faithful men, so they can teach others to do this. Not just men who say, oh, you know, they've been given light and say, this is what you should do, and you don't do this. Faithful men, men who 
the entrance of that word is give a flight, but now I'm going to walk in wisdom, redeem my time, and teach others to do the same. And so that's the age we live in. It was just like the days of Lot, just like the times of Lot and the times of Noah. When you quit, when you quit walking, you can believe all you want to. You can have light, you can have honor, you can know what is right and know what is wrong, but guess what? Children will follow, they will follow your behavior. Right. Your your words are not that your words will have no power over the, over them if your actions do not follow what you say yes. <clears throat> and it says the lord spake unto aaron saying do not drink wine or strong drink thou nor thy sons with thee when you go into the tabernacle of the congregation lest you die it shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and that you may put difference between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean and look what he says and that ye may what Teach the, children. Teach the children of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them. Right? Listen. What what was it connected to? Do not drink wine or strong drink. He didn't say, oh, don't tell them not to do it. And they'll listen to you even if you do it. Right. If you do these things, Right? and you show them there's a difference between holy and unholy and between clean and unclean, you will teach them. Psalm says, come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you something. And if you want to save anybody out of this generation, when the Lord comes back, there's only one way to do it. I will teach you what? The fear of the Lord. See, that's the problem. The problem is you can sit here and you can preach the Bible all you want to preach it. You can have all the light and the knowledge and the wisdom and everything that you want to have. But if you don't redeem your time, if you don't walk in wisdom, if you don't walk as an example, those children are not going to listen to you. And those children are going to grow up and they're going to become adults. And that's what happened. They didn't teach. They were marrying. They were giving in marriage. They were doing all these things. They might have been saying, oh, you shouldn't do this. But guess what they were doing? Doing, they were doing, the, doing the opposite, weren't they? They were saying you should. They were, they were speaking a nice game. But they weren't doing what they were saying they were supposed to be doing. You have to walk in wisdom. Wisdom is the what? Use or exercise of knowledge. And so... We're to teach our children the fear of the Lord. Now look what it says about, about Noah, and, and we'll close here. It says, because remember, just as the days of Noah, just as the days of Lot, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Noah didn't just have light and just have understanding. Noah walked with God. When God said, no, I'm going to destroy the world with a flood, you know what he did? He moved with fear and he prepared and he saved his family. Right. He says, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing. Now look what it says. Wherein few, look at that word, few. And he tells you what few means. Eight souls. Eight people in the entire world were saved because of Noah. Mm -hmm. And he says, if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment and spared not the old world, but saved Noah. Think about the world. How many people were in the world? A lot. Remember, he says, the sons of God, when it, God went into the children of men. Noah wasn't doing that. God had his own, he had, he had a lineage that was set aside that he wanted to save. 
and they were destroyed. They didn't make it. He says, he saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing on the flood, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Listen, you can know what's right and live ungodly. Right. You can say, Oh, you know what, son, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't drink alcohol, but guess what you're doing? He, know, he know he knows he knows where the, he knows where your your liquor is. He sees, and look what he says. And delivered. Look at those two words. Just Lot. Just Noah and his family. Out of all those people, just Lot. When the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, 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 unless a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom. Right? right? And guess what? <laughs> guess what? We're, well, this is the kingdom here. Friend, you came into here not having a wedding garment. How, would you, how is that possible? And you know what that believer is going to be? Speechless. Mm hmm. Amen. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away, cast him in the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth because many are called. You have, there's many people that have light, that have understanding. But few are chosen. You know why? Because there is a difference between having light and understanding and walking in wisdom. Right. You have to exercise that knowledge. God says, you know what, if you see a man that's hungry and thirsty and you have the ability to feed him and clothe him and give him drink, guess what? And you don't do it, how dwelleth the love of God in you? Yeah. And finally, he says, and this is, think about the way it was in the days of Noah and the way it was in the days of Lot. It got to the point where God, what? He only saved Noah and his family. He only saved Lot. And we know just as the days of Noah, so it shall it be in the days when the Son of Man shall appear. Right. And it says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Now look what he says. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find what? Faith, faith on the earth. Why? Why will he not find faith? It's not because... We don't teach our children. Our children are growing up in a godless world. And if, listen, I don't mean, I'm not trying to say that you, we, we quit teaching children because we do. We want people to be saved. But the snowball has already started to roll downhill. Right. And when he comes, is he going to find faith on the earth? And so why is he not going to find it? Because children are going to be disobedient to parents. They're going to be unthankful. People are going to be unholy. They're going to be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That is the, a look at the world. Look at the world as you see it right now. Do you see the sexual sin? Do you see the disobedience to parents? Do you see the natural affection? Do you see all those things? Do you see all those things that he listed in there? What is it? Let me, um, I'm going to find it again. Because we became a nation who knew not Joseph. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where we are. That's where we are. Despisers of those that are good, high-minded, heady, proud, boasters, blasphemers, unthankful, unholy. Yes. We, we live in the church of Laodicea. We're lukewarm. We think we're, we think we're rich. We think we're... We think we're full. We don't need nothing from God. And really, we're just destitute. We're naked. And so anyway, uh, that's all I got. I know that was kind of short, but um, I just, I know y'all know we're living in the last days, but I just want you to, well, sometimes we like to like maybe think we're farther off than right. what we are, but we're not that far from the second coming of Christ. Right. Right. 
and I want you to see all the conditions that the Bible talked about are present right now for him to come back. Now, there are things that have to happen, but mm-hmm. all the all the conditions, God put up, remember, for a while, God put up with it in Noah's time while he was preparing the what? The ark. The ark. He put up with it until Noah finished the ark. Noah moved with fear. He prepared, right, to the saving of his house. He's allowing believers to prepare to save their families. That's what we're the age we're living in right now. He, God's ready to destroy the world now. Amen. But he's waiting, and he's, he's waiting for us to do what we're supposed to do. Yes. All right. So any questions or comments?